the SIMPAD project at the University of Stavanger, um, the nursing school, was really interesting because they, they had several challenges. They had a challenge with um, lower scores on their national exams. Uh, students were complaining they didn't get to practice enough. Altogether, um, it was a combined challenge they had, um, and they didn't, hadn't done too much on simulation before. So uh, it was a unique opportunity to try to integrate simulation in the curriculum and see if that could help with some of their challenges. Uh, we wanted our students to be better at clinical skills, but we also have a problem for them. They need a lot of training, and we are not that... Uh, so many, we are not that big of a staff group, so we needed to use, we needed to figure out how the student can use it on their own without needing us to be the facilitator. The couple of months before the exam, they are, um, they are loaning the SIMPAD and then they practice and practice over and over and over again all the skills. When the nursing college first saw SIMPAD, uh, like with all small gadgets, they, they like the SIMPAD itself. Um, what they didn't understand and realize was how to use this in multiple settings. So like most people, they started out with using it with a mannequin, to control a mannequin. Um, now, as they moved on, they realized uh, they already had done simulation previously with role-playing. And they did a sort of a hybrid solution where they took the SIMPAD into the role-play and used it with standardized patients. What they hadn't done before was to standardize the delivery. So what they did was to take almost like a checklist on the SIMPAD. And they went through that checklist in a way that allowed for standardization in the training session. And suddenly they found themselves in a position where students couldn't use the SIMPAD. It wasn't an instructor anymore or a teacher. A student could actually use it with two other students, which is probably one of the more really unique features of this implementation. The students, I think they find it um, more fun to practice. I think it's easier for them to go here and practice now when they actually know that they're getting the right feedback. They know that they are rehearsing what they need to rehearsing. They get more confident because we, through the SIMPAD, we can actually signalize to the, to the student that this is what we want you to learn. The, the notion of training to perfection is really important for several reasons. The obvious one is you need to be able to perform a particular skill. Um, the other one is it has to do with self-efficacy. Uh, there is a lot of uh, theory supporting the idea that who you think you are and what you think you can do really affects what you're able to do. So being able to train yourself and grow your self-confidence will have an impact on how you perform out in a practical life. Um, it improves their confidence because um, now they can do it whenever they want and they can do it in their own terms. They can do it alone if they want to. Some of the students are actually just loaning the SIMPAD and just going through it, seeing all the questions and rehearsing and some of them are testing each other. And We have 260 students so we can't give them the, that personal feedback to everyone, but now they can actually get it from the SIMPAD instead of from us. So, training to perfection is really um, key in delivering good healthcare. Because if you're not confident, you will always shy away from those difficult situations. And what we really need is a healthcare workforce that don't shy away. They have the confidence, they have the skills, to go into a situation and handle it well. Nursing is a lot about communication. It's a lot about human contact and a lot about people, people skills and stuff like that. And of course, there's a lot of skepticism. Can actually uh, electronic or digital device help us teach the students these skills? But uh, I think it can. So what happens at this, at this nursing school is actually um, building that confidence level. Um, and growing them as persons and allowing them to train to the level where they feel their confidence, not when a teacher says this is good enough, because that's really not a good measure. The good measure is really when a student says, now I'm, I understand this, I get it, I can do it, and I'm confident, so now I can move on. That's always, from a learning perspective, much, much stronger 
than a teacher saying, now it's fine. Uh, so the students now give feedback that they are, what they're actually learning is quite transferable when they come out to practice. But now, when they're doing their practical placements, they actually said that this learning experience has been quite useful for them. Simulation was never meant to be a career path. It's meant to be inside the regular sort of uh, way you run your institution, your teaching. And if we, if we couldn't deliver that, we'll see that pe you need specially trained people to do this. You don't do that anymore. With these new solutions, everyone can get involved. And it depends on how you use it as well. So the product can be great and it can be like all you need. And if you don't use it correctly, or maybe just the student don't figure it out or they don't like it or stuff, they'll, they'll, they won't use it. But once you have the scenarios and they are well integrated into the national curriculum, if there's such a thing, uh, you have the core components. Trying to work this into the curriculum as a new product has been quite of a bumpy road. We've been back and forth, and, but I think it all comes down to, to information and showing teachers, other teachers, what, what can we do with this and what do you need? And actually asking them the question, what do you want? Imagine you were in nursing school uh, and you wanted to get in, into simulation at this point. If this is really well designed, you can leave it to the students. So the learnings for other faculty and other institutions who want to get involved in this is really, there's not that high a threshold anymore, like it used to be. If you do it well beforehand, design it well, students can now run on their own. And the, the old bottlenecks of having an operator, having a very highly trained facilitator, is not there anymore. The student demands new ways of learning because they are they are into they are used to getting feedback and getting um, all the knowledge fast and they, I think because what we put on the simpad it's no different than what we're teaching them or telling them when when I'm there, but uh, now they're getting it in a different way. So as such, the University uh, of Stavanger and the nursing school is a really really good example. They were not high flyers. They didn't know everything about simulation. On the contrary, but they moved from what they had and I think the model can now be replicated uh, to a certain extent. There, a little bit of tailoring every different place, but that's how it needs to be. By having a solution that's easy to implement, um, you can also get the effects we know is available from doing simulation training.